Hi everyone, welcome back to Rich Reviews and today we're showcasing this incredible McLaren 765LT Spider. But this is no ordinary 765LT. This is named MS01, chassis number 01. This is the first McLaren 765LT Spider that was ever made and possibly the most unique bespoke McLaren ever made. McLaren grouped their cars into three series, Ultimate, Sport and Super, and the 765LT is part of the Super Series. The first LT that was created was a 675LT, then came the 600LT and then came the 765LT, so there's only been three LT versions that have been created to date. Now what does LT stand for? LT stands for long tail, in effect a hardened tracked focused edition of the car that it's based on and the 765LT is based on the incredible 720S. 765 of the 765LT were made and the 765 also stands for the metric version of brake horsepower which is 765 PS which is 755 brake horsepower. The 765LT is a track focused rocket ship. It is capable of accelerating from 0 to 62 in 2.75 seconds and weighing in at only 1,388 kilograms. It is 80 kilograms lighter than the 720S it is based on with 25% more downforce due to the extraordinary additional aerodynamic features. Only 765 spiders were made and only 55 were allocated to the UK. However, it is believed that 20 of that allocation have been exported, leaving only 35 remaining. This is a truly rare car indeed. Now the owner liaised directly with McLaren's special operations to be able to design and develop this car, so it's very, very unique. Would you believe it that the car was first built, fully built as a 765LT at McLaren Production Center? Then it was fully dismantled and it was reassembled to the customer's customized specification at McLaren Special Operations. This particular 765LT took four years to come to fruition. The customer ordered the car in 2018. It concluded specification in 2021 and was delivered to the customer in 2022. Now the LT editions of McLaren supercars are based on production models. In this case, the 765 is based on a 720S and their track focused edition of the production models they're based on. So this is in effect the track edition of the 720S. What does that mean? Okay, it means it's exceptionally lightened. This is 80 kilograms lighter than 720S and the brake horsepower is pushed up as well. So this is 45 brake horsepower more than 720S at 755 brake horsepower and 590 pound foot of torque. Now, notoriously, McLaren exceed those expectations with regards to brake horsepower. So they depict this car, for example, as being 755 brake horsepower, but most of these when dynoed are over 800, are over 800 brake horsepower, commonly between 800 and 850 brake horsepower. Now, with this being a McLaren Special Operations car, it's actually quite a bit lighter than a standard 765LT as well. So whereas 765LT is 80 kilograms lighter than 720S, this is perceivably quite a bit lighter than that too. We don't know the exact figures, but this is specified in carbon fiber across the whole body. The whole front splitter is a completely different configuration in relation to the 720S. These side skirts are more emphasized. We have a lot more aero on the 765LT. This rear blade is a 765LT extra configuration. Now the heart of the 765LT is a four litre twin turbo V8. This pushes out 755 brake horsepower and 590 pound foot of torque. And as I detailed earlier, probably more realistically around 800 to 850 brake horsepower. 
Now, not a lot of people realize, but this four liter plant is pretty much identical to the engine that's provided in the Senna. As you'd expect, this car has some very unique bespoke design features. For example, the car has this stunning volcanic orange external paintwork, which is carried on through the, the cohesive design all the way through the car. In addition, if we just pop the frunk, Apart from weighing nothing because it's carbon fiber, the frunk has these racing driver signatures underneath the lid. As we can see here, we've got Lando Norris, Daniel Ricciardo, Bruna Senna, and Amanda McLaren's signatures underneath the frunk of the car. Now the roof adds an additional 49 kilograms, but that 49 kilograms is just in the roof mechanism itself, not in the roof panel, because the roof panel is carbon fiber and near as damn it weighs very little, weighs nothing. This operation takes only 11 seconds. In, in models, in Ferrari models, such as the 458 and the 488, it takes 14 seconds. It's a lot quicker in the 765 LT Spider. To finalize on the external specification of this 765, it also has the Senna brakes. Standard 765 LTs have the Senna actual calipers, but this has the full Senna brake system. That's an additional 14K as an option. The 765 LT has a full titanium exhaust system. And the way this differs to the 720 is this has a quad pipe outlet system, which is higher in the rear of the car. And you can always tell if a 765 has been driven as hard as it was designed to be driven because you get the blue ink around the titanium exhaust outlet pipes. A key requirement for the visual design of the 765 was for the external colorway to flow cohesively from front to back. A menacing design of volcano orange and bare carbon was used to achieve this. From front to back, the volcano orange color scheme rises above the black of the front splitter, flowing along the sides of the 765 and along the edges of the rear wing. Separating the intense lustre of the volcano orange is the contrasting jet black carbon of the frontal V widening across the full width of the roof, finishing along the midsection of the rear wing. The interior carries forward the external black and volcano orange colorway with black Alcantara being the main theme with burnt orange accents introduced to align with the external color scheme. The cabin is stripped out and purposeful as you'd expect of a lightweight track special with the carbon tub being ever evident, fully embracing you and the car for structural rigidity. As you'd expect of a McLaren, the carbon structure means little to no rigidity is lost when you drop the roof. The carbon steering wheel is the only levered item, while the switch gear is machined aluminium and is the only luxury evident in the cabin. That is, apart from the only two specification options tick that add weight, air conditioning and a Bowers and Wilkins stereo. Inside the 765 LT now with the owner Jazz. Thanks, Jazz, again for letting us feature your incredible 765 LT Spider on our channel. Very, very much appreciated. You're very welcome. So, first impressions. Because of the carbon tub, it's very snug inside here, and you can definitely feel the presence of the carbon tub. Um, notwithstanding, when you get in the car, it's very tight. Uh, the seat encapsulates you and you feel very snug inside the cabin, but you can still freely move. And these bucket seats, which are the center bucket seats, they really hold you firmly, especially around the hips and the thighs. Um, I've got a bit of free movements around my shoulders, but it's still fairly snug, which is what you need for a track focused car. Also, you can feel the vibrations of the engine through the carbon tub. The suspension system on the, uh, that, that connects the engine to the, the shock absorbers that connect the engine in effect to the chassis of the car, they, they bolt directly to the carbon tub and it makes it so that you can feel all the vibrations of the car as you're driving through through the, the body of the car, through the chassis of the car and, through the, and up through the seats of the car as well. Which is again what you'd expect from a very track focused experienced car. So we're going to have a bit of a, a QA session, hopefully we're going to be able to get some comprehensive questions and answers and, and uh, so, some coherent questions and answers out. Um, while we go out in this uh, 765 LT 
uh, should it be a bit of spirited driving so if um, if I go quiet for a while viewers then you'll understand why first of all Jazz why a McLaren why not Ferrari Lamborghini or any other supercar manufacturer why did you choose McLaren I came via Ferrari so I've actually got three times more ownership time with Ferrari than I have with McLaren and uh, so I had a 348 Spider, I had a V12 uh, Lusso and uh, I then got a 720S now that itself was a sort of a tough decision because I've been uh, reading online and uh, there was a lot of negativity around McLaren so I didn't really want one uh, because I was worried about reliability and um, I was trying to choose another car and the first car I tried was the 488 Spyder. Um, I quite liked it but it didn't really uh, thrill me. Uh, I tried it on track and road so I thought I'll try a Huracan Performante so I was open to any brand. Um, the Huracan Performante I actually preferred particularly because of the engine. It just sounded absolutely glorious. Uh, what I didn't like though was the inert steering, there wasn't much feel and feedback of the car. I thought I'll try a McLaren, so I tried a 720S and a 570S. The 570S was excellent, I mean it just felt like a supercar version of a Lotus x -Niche. Um The 720S just blew my mind. I loved the 720S, uh, it proved to be the most reliable car I ever owned. And, um, Which is so impressive considering the, the bad press the 720S got. It's, yeah, I mean, there are obviously bad cars out there as with any brand, but I've had far more trouble with um, other cars, including my Ferraris, than I've had with uh, with any McLaren. And uh, this car, I've had it for less time so far, only about a year and a half. But it's, uh, I've done more miles than it already. I just loved the way the McLarens drove. They were stiff, they're light. Um, steering and brake feel is just absolutely incredible. McLarens are very well known for their steering. Very, you have a lot of feel and texture comes through the steering wheel. Uh, uh, absolutely. So, with regards to the, the process of specifying the 765 LT with your liaisons directly with McLaren Special, Special Operations, how did you kick off that process? Uh, well, I, um, I, I was very connected with McLaren anyway, which is how I managed to get uh, this car, you know, uh, chassis number one. As I got that, I knew I wanted the car to be particularly special, to have it very bespoke to me. Uh, so I connected with, uh, it was quite easy when you ask, um, so I connected with McLaren Special Operations and, uh, and they were very, very engaged all the way through the process. So when I test drove the factory 765 LT Coupe, um, I immediately got back to MTC and started the specking process. Uh, that was in December 20. And uh, from there on, I just worked with uh, McLaren Special Operations uh, for eight months, um, iteratively just tweaking uh, specification and visual design of the car. The specification was primarily focused on light weighting and uh, visual design, was, uh, it was obviously what you see how I want it to look. So they were sending me renders um, multiple times a week. Um, I was looking at renders from all angles, so above side or every angle you could think of uh, just to make sure it looked right from every angle and uh, eight months later uh, I signed it off with um, a final adjustment being a one millimeter line to the rear wing um, the split between the paint and the carbon so that's how uh, after the OCD I was about it <laughs> negative aspect at all with regards to the liaison and you and you with McLaren Special Operations for the car? Absolutely none whatsoever. The gear shifts are brutal. Absolutely. And that's not the fastest. At the moment I'm just in sport. In track <laughs> it's it's harder. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I can see if you test drive one of these you just want one. They sell themselves these cars. Yeah, absolutely. 
the brakes you can really feel them bite and, and pull and haul the car in as well of course you've got center brakes on this car it's one of the options you can have you don't hear too much of a whine from the turbos either which is which is cool well that's right yeah you hear a bit but yeah. uh, it's it's there but it's not extreme yeah it's not intrusive this is like the perfect car to be in to win you over to McLaren. <laughs> it doesn't get much better. It's like a drug. It is, isn't it? It's very addictive. <laughs> an awesome experience because you enjoyed it <laughs> thanks <laughs> once in a lifetime guys once in a lifetime <laughs> 